two, you have enough business to support you opening that. And three, you've worked with somebody in that industry that you go, this is the guy that can run it for me. Mm -hmm. Right, that's the third part. You gotta yeah. be able to get that guy that can run it for you. And when looking at that guy, I wanna look at core values and say, is this guy value-wise aligned with me? And if he is, then I can give him this job to do and walk away. So like John Pack, as an example, who you met. When John Pack came in, I was running property management. Like I was leasing all the apartments. I was showing him. John came in. John said, what's my job? I said, John, your job's two things. Keep our tenants happy and keep our apartment right. And he said, well, how do I do that? And I said, that's what I hired you for. <laughs> and, and he figured it out. Like I didn't have a real good system. Like I was just doing whatever I could to get mm -hmm. through the system. But he was better than me. Yep. So when we got him and we put him in place, now all of a sudden the property management got better. Mm -hmm. So it's that whole delegate and elevate, but you've got to get people that meet your core values. Mm -hmm. And so you got to know what those are and you got to know what, you know, we have tons of partnerships, tons of partnerships on real estate deals, tons of partnerships with these six companies where somebody is always going to be an equity partner in that business with us. We're not going to do it ourselves and own 100% of it. Somebody's got to be in charge of that business, run it and run it because it, you know, because they love it and it's their right. baby. They're intrinsically into it. Exactly. Awesome. Great Top level that. operator has to match. I understand yeah. what you're saying. That's, that's yeah. interesting. Integrator to your visionary, so to speak. Yeah, and, and so it's interesting, like John's not an integrator, so we mm -hmm. do follow EOS since, right. since you're using those terminologies, right, yeah. and core values. <laughs> um, John's not an integrator. He's a terrible oh, integrator. Okay. Okay. He's a visionary guy too, mm -hmm. which is interesting because, you know, you're attracted to people that are similar to you, right? Yep. Like that guy can do this, I can do this. Um, and anybody can do something for a short period of time. So you can take a visionary guy like John with a thousand ideas and put him in place for a certain period of time, he'll be able to do it. But after that period of time, he needs to get the opportunity mm -hmm. to do what I'm doing, which is now what we've done with him, right? He now has the opportunity sure. to run his own show, be yep. the visionary, That's great. all his crazy ideas. He can figure out which ones he's yeah. gonna implement or not. Awesome. Yeah, John was a very, very sharp guy. He, he, um, you know, I didn't know he, he came down and it was just, you know, you sometimes talk to people that he just spoke the language, right? He just knew, and I know property management very well. We, I had sold, um, manage a company to to the olives that's why we're here right so um i understood like the building of the system so when i was talking to him about it, i was like man he really understood how to put these systems together well uh, i don't know if it was him you combination of the two but you know we manage enough properties where i know like where the downfalls would be and every time there was something that came up it was like bang he knew what he was doing there so it was an interesting conversation which kind of leads me to a question so you have six companies mm -hmm. and we always say like property management in the real estate industry is um how do i say this nicely it's the least sexiest part of real estate, okay? So of your six businesses, which one is the least sexy and which one's the most sexy? <laughs> you can base that on your pocketbook or you can base that on which one you enjoy the most, but not, not all of them are fun. I, I think it's an interesting opportunity to get real feedback on that from somebody who's done all of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, everybody just... says development's the sexiest, but is it really in practice? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it depends. I think it really depends on what you enjoy. So, mm -hmm. if you if we go back to the to the EOS system and these level ten meetings, the ones that, from a meeting standpoint, are the best. Property management is the best because it's the easiest to quantify. It's the easiest mm -hmm. to say, okay, to well, we can measure, we can quantify. We don't really have that many issues, and we're really solving stuff every day. Where the development side is way more you know, difficult to kind of get your hands around exactly what your issues are. Why am I not finding deals? Like, what, why, why is this guy able to make this deal work and we're not, right? Because there's a lot more variables. Like, what's this guy's cost of capital? Well, I don't know that. So now I'm making assumptions as to why people might be doing crazy deals versus us, right? Where property management is, it's pretty finite. And you do this, you do this, you do this. And so I enjoy actually that end of it. We solve a lot of problems. Plus we make a lot of people happy. Now we don't make any money on property management. We make next to no money on property Not management. Not the most lucrative one, right? But what it does is we've managed our buildings to a 0.8% vacancy rate, oh, well. right? And our cost to manage our average building is under 26% of as an expense ratio, right? Wow, that's so really low. Yeah, when you look at those now, a lot of that's because we have tax abatements on a lot of the buildings sure, that sure. we're doing. But still, I think we've we've figured out a system that's very friendly to the tenant and very efficient, and that allows us to do things on the other side. So I am very fond of property management, what our property management team does, and how good they are. Um, 
and the, I really run the development arm of it, and that's the most frustrating piece of it for me on a day-to-day really? -day basis. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I don't know that that answers your questions, but so it's actually the opposite. So, yeah, the opposite so it was the opposite of what I would have thought. Um, yeah. You know what I found interesting about property management? It's not it's not going to have the kind of bottom line numbers that a, that a development situation will. Sure. But what it does, I found, I'm sure you probably found this too, it becomes the hub or the feeder ground for a lot of the other companies, right? Like everything has to revolve around that management because if the tenants aren't happy, they don't have a great space to live, it doesn't really matter. You can develop something over here because you can't convert on the operations of it in property management or vice versa, your construction, your construction suffering, you know, so it all kind of revolves around property management. Um, and it's interesting you say, it's a very measurable and quantifiable business model. Um, it's just, you know, fortunately you guys make a lot of your money and not necessarily on the management, right? You do development and so forth, but uh, volume, it's a volume game if you're if you're a third party manager. So um, that's interesting. That wasn't the answer I was expecting, quite frankly. Same. Yeah, okay. I thought you were gonna say kick property management to the curb and yeah, yeah but no, he's, he enjoys it. So here's the thing, we've had a thousand conversations about the hours that we spend on property management versus yeah. the revenue that it generates, mm -hmm. right? But I look at it and say, why do, Why would people want to, we do a lot of partnerships, why would people want to partner with us, right? Mm -hmm. Well, okay, you can do the development, but a lot of people can do the development. Well, you can do the construction well, and you can do the property management well. Well, no, there's not a lot of people that can do that, mm -hmm. right? So the combination of those three things is why people come to us and do business with us. And I'm telling you, we do a lot of partnerships where people find deals and come to us and say, hey, I got this great piece of property, I'd like to do something with you. And we're always like, well, why, you know, like, why do you want to do something with us? Like, you can do it yourself. But I, I take for granted because we've been doing those two things for so long, how hard they really are, and how hard it is to get somebody that you're always going to have issues, right? But what you want to be able to do is, when you have an issue, sit down with somebody and and feel like I finished that conversation and it was reasonable, right? Like I didn't get everything I wanted, but it was a reasonable conversation. It was well thought out. It was logical and why they're asking for this makes sense. Mm -hmm. And as long as you can do that, which I think we're good at, like I'll take profit out of my pocket on something if I feel like we made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not gonna sit in the room with you and go, hey look, this is a problem and you gotta pay for it. Or right. say, hey look, we made this mistake and we didn't realize that we were gonna have to run this ladder all the way out to this other street. Now, granted it wasn't in the scope of work from day one, but I, you've hired me as your partner, I should have known that. I've got to take some responsibility for that and, and pay for some of that. Right. And we'll always do that to try and, you know, and because of that, I think people are comfortable dealing with us because those conversations are always reasonable. Yeah. Integrity in business. I was going to say, it comes back to the core values statement. So, I, and I've noticed this, and I've always said this, the higher you get in the real estate world, like, so when people first come in, they're like, they don't want to tell you an address. They're scared you're going to take a deal. There's, yeah. As soon as people start getting scared and, and, and of uh, other people's, you know, can I trust them? Can I do this? You realize that their game has so far to elevate because what I've noticed is that the higher you get in real estate, the more things, a contract is a formality. It's really, you know, when you sit across the table from this guy and he shakes your hand and says, yeah, I made a mistake. They own their mistakes. If it costs some money, so be it. But like, when those guys get into a room together and do deals, they know you know your word is as good as what you say and what your intentions were, what was right by the situation. So it's uh, everybody gets so wrapped up in the contract uh, end of real estate or I don't want to tell you this, he's going to take that. But that's for small minded thinking. When you get to that bigger level, it's like, uh, you know, Warren Buffett says, mm -hmm. His he spent a whole lifetime building his reputation, right? That's what you're building, your reputation. And more so than money, he said that, he goes, you can't, you can take my money away, but you can't take my reputation. And therefore he has a lot of money because of his reputation. So um, I, I would assume that what you're telling me or the underlying things that you're saying right now are in line with that. You guys, you're very, uh, you know, defensive, not defensive, but protective of your reputation because it took you forever to build it, right? I mean, that's, that's really what you build. Yeah, now listen, we're super protective of the brand. I mean, the brand is important to us. Mm -hmm. And it's very important to us. That, and that's one of the reasons we're not growing quicker than we do, than we are, is because I don't want to. You know, we have lots of opportunities, but that I don't want to do yeah. things that somebody's going to go, oh, we use those guys and they didn't do this. Like, that's not worth the most, right? So I, I do think it's super important reputation brand. You know, that is top you know, top of the market for us or top of mind for us in terms of what we gotta do. I love it. Um, all, everything, all the top players that we've, that I've sat down with, they all have the same kind of foundational um, thought process. So, George, you got anything else you wanna ask Gary while we got him here, trapped in a room? Yeah, um, so, uh, what, 
in, in terms of your life, it seems like you've built, you know, a lot of companies, you've built a lot of wealth. Like what, uh, what kinds of principles do you adhere to in your personal, you know, wealth development or even your business wealth development that you uh, feel as though have enabled you to succeed? Is it always putting away a certain amount of money or percentage? Is it like, what's, what are the, um, if you were giving advice to your 15 or 16 year old self about building wealth, what would you say, I guess? So I, I would tell you this, that you've got to have, at least in your mind, some semblance of a plan, right? 